suspect arrest over Canada mass stabbing dies from self-infliction injuries. The functative wanted over a mass stabbing in Canada that killed 10 people. An injured 18 has died in hospital after his arrest. Police have confirmed, with sources saying it was from self-inflict wounds. Miles Sanderson went into medical distress after his arrest, and he was taken to hospital when he died. Royal Canadian Mounted Police Assistant Commissioner Rhonda Blackmore said, Police found a knife in the truck, which police has rammed off the road into a ditch, but Blackmore could not comment on the cause of his death. Sources familiar with the situation earlier confirmed to The Guardian that Sanderson died shortly after being taken into custody. After police rammed his stolen vehicle, police source gave similar account to Canadian media outlet Global News and Associated Press. With Sanderson dead, police may never understand what motivated him in the mass stabbing, Blackmore said. Police launched a renewed search operation, include aircraft, on Wednesday afternoon, after being called to a report on a break-and-enter involving Sanderson's arm with a knife, where a Chevrolet truck was stolen. The truck was later spotted racing along the highway at 150 km per hour. Sparking 20 calls of sightings to protect the public, police move in a directed Sanderson off the road near Rostern, Castachuan, at approximately 3.3 p.m., where the arrest was made. An independent investment into the circumstance of his death will be held, said Blackmore. The news came shortly after Sanderson's parent issued an emotional plea for their son to turn himself in. Sanderson, 32, faced multiple murders charged for his role in a knife attack that devastated the James Smith Green Nation, an indigenous community, and the nearby village of Walden. Mile, my boy, turn yourself in, please. You can do this, his mother told CBC News. Come back, turn yourself in, do the right thing. Sanderson dad also called on his son to surrender. Mile, please, please turn yourself in. We don't want no more hurt. I don't want anybody hurt anymore. Please, my son, I love you. Turn yourself in and be safe, he said. News of the death came hours after the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and provincial coroners released the names of the 10 victims, whose age ranged from 23 to 78. The victims' name as Thomas Burns, 23, Carol Burns, 46, January Burns, 28, Lydia Glory Burns, 61, Bonnie Burns, 48, Earl Burns, 66, Lana Heads, 49, Christina Heads, 54, Robert Sanderson, 49, and Wesley Peterson, 78. All the victims were residents of James Smith Cree Nation, apart from Peterson who lived in Walden in northern Saskatchewan. Eight other people were wounded in the rampage, which ranked among the worst act of mass violence attacked in Canada modern history. Police said some of the victims appear to have been target, while others are apparently random. Sanderson brother Damien, 31, who was also initially suspected in the attack, was found dead on Monday near the site of the attack. Authorities say his injuries were not self-inflicted. Sanderson's parents acknowledged the pain their son's actions had caused as the public learned about the life cut short. I want to apologize for my son. We don't know the whole story, but I want to apologize to everybody that was hurt and affected by this terrible situation, his mother said. His father added, I give my all sincere apologies to the families. From the bottom of my heart, I meant it. The father said, I am so sorry this happened. I don't know what else to say, what to do. I wish it was a dream. Sanderson's death put an end to days of fear in the surrounding Paris regions where fresh panics have been sparked by a string of false lightning of Sanderson. Mark Akron, whose sister Bonnie Burns and nephew Gregory were among the victims, said the last few days had taken on a surreal quality. This terrible tragedy that nobody wants or asks for, it still feels like it's a nightmare. The stabbing pre has prompt question over why Sanderson, who had a long history of violence, was out on the street. Parole document released on Tuesday show 
that he had 59 convictions over 20 years, including for domestic assault, assault with weapons, and attacking a police officer. The record also showed that seven years ago he attacked and stabbed one of the victims killed in the weekend rampage. On Tuesday, the public safety minister Marco Medicino said he was extremely concerned following reports the country parole board granted Sanderson's statutory release after serving two thirds of his sentence, despite concern he might reoffend. That's it for today. Thank you and goodbye.